as I'm sure you know, this is a celebration of Paul Baca's career. This is a relaxed event. Please feel comfortable coming to the front. We will not be asking questions except of the chief judge. Um, again, welcome everyone to today's event. Um, we're recognizing, of course, Paul Baca, our friend and colleague. Um, I, I, I'd like to start, I, I, by the way, am Mitch Elfers. I'm the clerk of the court. Um, I've uh, worked for the court about 32, 33 years. Um, I mention that because Paul uh, is one of our senior employees. He's officially worked for the court as of January 24th of this year for 30 years. Um, he, he has a, a few extra years on me as a, a, a contract and a court reporter supporting our court before that. And you'll hear a little bit about that from one of our judges, our chief judge, in just a moment. I um, wanted to open today with just a couple comments. Um, there's a lot that could be and maybe should be said about Paul and his career. Paul, are you hiding behind the, yes. <laughs> But my comments are going to be brief for a very specific reason. A couple months ago, Paul gave um, uh, his uh, supervisor, Vanessa, and I the heads up. Oh, there she is. A heads up that he was um, considering retiring, and he actually gave us a date. And part of that process, after we you know, uh, felt the pain and dealt with the pain, was we asked Paul, how do you want to celebrate your time at the court? How do you want to celebrate your career? And Paul was adamant with Vanessa, I want to go out the same way I've, I've um, lived my career, quietly, with respect, <laughs> and with a simple nod of appreciation. Now here's the interesting part. Um, Vanessa was slightly confused, reported that to me. That made sense to me. I know the humble human being that Paul Bach is. <laughs> um, but the challenge is, uh, as the clerk, as his supervisor, those are formal positions. I respect my employees and I want to respect their wishes. So I advised um, the staff and the court, the judges of the court, of Paul's um, preference regarding his going away event. Um, and it, uh, let's see, I think that settled for about a day, maybe two, before I received a call. Um, a suggestion, Mitch, maybe you should visit with Paul again. Maybe <laughs> you should let him know this type of going away event is for everyone, not just him. Um, I expressed my understanding that Paul was really uncomfortable with this. And then I was reminded, but you should try, Mitch. And I said, of course, Your Honor. I will do that right away. Um, uh, it's obvious that, you know, a couple days later, Paul came and visited me and said, Mitch, we're going to be doing something. Can we do it subtly? Can we have a slice of cake, maybe a certificate? And I was like, yeah, uh, that, Paul? I am going to do everything in my power using the authority of the office of the clerk and the persuasiveness of the office of the clerk to hold a low-key event for you. I said that, Paul. And now you know what the authority and persuasiveness of a clerk really means. Uh, that said, I'm going to dive in. I, I do, Paul, uh, we went to lunch. I shared some comments with your colleagues at lunch. I've enjoyed our career together, but I'm going to respect your wishes. I do have a certificate for Paul. Paul, come on up. <laughs> and here it is. It's the framed certificate. It's a testimonial, retirement testimonial, uh, presented to Paul Baca, and I will read it. It is not long. On the occasion of your retirement, we extend to you our thanks and appreciation for your contributions, dedication, and service to the federal judiciary and the United States government. It is signed by um, Robert Conrad Jr., the director of the administrative office of the courts. I don't know, I was gonna say, I don't think the director knows you, Paul, but you know everyone, so you might know the director. <laughs> yeah. 
But his words, um, I'm, I'm sure he prints this on a lot of testimonials, but they ring true to me, Paul. And um, so here's your, your you, testimonial David. from the director. Thank you. Thank you. Um, here is a bonus card from bankruptcy court. <laughs> I believe there should be a couple grand in here, Paul. <laughs> Uh, Lana Merriweather couldn't make it today, so she asked me to call her out. Um, and, and but to to give that to you, we also have from the clerk's office um, all our, our traditional Nambe plaque. Okay, and it rec it recognizes uh, um, Paul's career, official career as a, an official court reporter for the district, from January twenty first, twenty fourth of nineteen ninety four, till um today, August 30th. Um, Paul, I, I, I actually am going to respect your request. I know you don't want me to get emotional. I know you don't want me to get you emotional. So that is my gift for you today, Thank Paul. You. I am going to um, say, well, it feels like I'm going to miss you. I, I will on occasion. <laughs> I know you can't give up the work you love. And I know we're going to be able to rely on you to do some contracting work for us, <laughs> for our most challenging judges. Okay. Um, with that said, I'm going to um, turn the program over to Chief Judge Johnson. I do believe he has um, uh, something to say and probably even something to give. Um, and before I do that, Chief, uh, I, I'd like to let everyone know when the Chief's done with his comments, we will have a video, um, some comments from some more of your colleagues and friends. Uh, and uh, and um, and I'm told the video has some sound issues. It goes a little bit high, a little bit low as we go from speaker to speaker. So just be patient with the video. Um, and as soon as that's done, that's when we'll be ready for your speech. <laughs> and we're gonna really, we're gonna really want to feel it, Paul. Um, really, actually, when that's done, um, we'll be listening to beautiful music from the Mariachis. We'll be. Uh, seeing wonderful uh, photos, blow up photos. Um, we'll be uh, partaking of some finger foods and refreshments. All these things provided to you, Paul, by the people who care and love, love you, the judges, your family, and your friends. Thank you. Um, Chief, the mic is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Paul officially became a court reporter in January of 1994, but he had been reporting for uh, the court and for other judges certainly before 1994, because I remember Paul telling me that uh, he, he's reported for Verl Payne, for Ed Meacham, I'm sure for Judge Campos, Santiago Campos. Uh, he, I think when he became an official reporter, he was hired by Judge Juan Bersiaga. He reported for uh, Judge John Conway. And then uh, he became the primary court reporter for Judge uh, Jim Parker. And uh, that was where I first met Paul. I was about two weeks before getting confirmed and Paul and uh, Judge Parker, <clears throat> that was back in the days before the Las Cruces courthouse. So there was a kind of a duty rotation and Judge Parker was going down to Las Cruces and invited me to drive over to Roswell to kind of get an idea what I was going to be getting into. And I had a chance to meet Paul and, you know, Paul um, really made me feel welcome like he does everybody. I, I think a good, you know, we do, we do serious work around here, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. And I know uh, that's certainly, that expression describes Paul and describes Judge Parker. And it was a, <clears throat> It was a great experience getting to meet uh, Paul, and I know um, when Judge Parker <clears throat> took senior status, then uh, Paul became the primary court reporter for uh, uh, Judge Judy Herrera when she came on board, and then when Judge Judy Herrera took senior status, then Paul became the primary co uh, court reporter for Judge Matthew Garcia when he came on board, and you can see these, uh, you know, these photographs, and of course Paul reported I've had the privilege of working with Paul, and I know Judge Martha Vasquez has as well. But Paul, I'm, I'm looking at these 
photos, and I'm very envious that there's not one of with you and me in it. So, <laughs> but um, Judge Parker shared. Uh, th there are a lot of interesting stories. In fact, Paul's experience with the court goes back so long. I think it would be accurate to say that Paul knows where all the skeletons are buried. <laughs> and um, but. Uh, there's just a wealth of stories of, about Paul. Um, one of the funniest ones that I recall was uh, when Judge Parker would go to Cruces. Of course, Paul was always liked uh, uh, nice cars, and Paul at the time had a Jaguar. And uh, so he was driving Judge Parker. Judge Parker was in the back seat with pre-sentence reports spread out all over the back seat, reading them, preparing them for all the sentencing. And I guess Judge Parker just happened to look up, and Paul, of course, was in the left lane going down I-25, and Judge Parker said, um, Paul, do, do you realize that you just passed a state trooper? <laughs> and sure enough, the red lights, uh, and, uh, but Judge Parker didn't get too upset with Paul, because anyone who ever rode with Judge Parker knew he also had a lead foot. <laughs> um, I think it's also important today, obviously, Paul is our special guest, but I want to introduce, you know, Paul's twin brother, Peter. He's in the back. And I, I had the chance to meet Peter a couple of weeks, and I didn't realize this, but uh, uh, Peter spent much of his distinguished career in Washington. But for seven or eight years, he was on uh, Justice uh, Kennedy's staff at the United States Supreme Court. And Paul's sister, Dolores, where's Dolores? Is she, yeah. So Paul and Dolores, you know, they were court reporters together in the court reporting business. And then Paul's uh, uh, younger sister, Christy, is here today. And uh, so thank you for, for being here. I know Paul is really very, very close. All, all I've really been impressed. All of the Baca siblings are, are very, very close. In terms of the, these pictures, uh, the, really the one that struck me and I think really best... Uh, resembles Paul as the one when you walk in the door with the, the, the angel's wings. And um, I remember Judge Parker, you know, told me that uh, Paul was a very devout Catholic and his, his Christian faith is very important to him. And I think Paul lives his faith. There were two verses that, uh, well, I guess what reminded me of this is Paul's, you know, devotion Devotion to his practice, his professionalism. He was an incredible court reporter, is an incredible court reporter. But he's also very loyal and devoted to all the people, you know, he works with. And I was particularly impressed, um, you know, as uh, during the last uh, year of Judge Parker's life, when Paul spent so much time with Judge Parker and Mrs. Parker and uh, Judge Parker's children. And it, I know it meant a lot to the Parker family. And it reminds me of the verse in Romans, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves. And also Philippians, instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for what is better for others. And I think those verses really typify Paul and exemplify the way he lives his life. So, Paul's always had a special relationship with not only the judges he reported for, but all the judges in the court. So we had a little special gift we wanted to give you, Paul. <laughs> so, this is a piece of Lydia Piper's glass artwork, and of course she's a longtime employee of the court, and so Paul, we wanted to present this to you. Thank you, and thank you so much for everything you've done. Thank you. Yes. So thank you. We wish you the best of happiness and success in retirement, but we also hope you will not stay away, that you will come back, you will help report, because we want to see you. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so I know there's a video presentation, but and Paul, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but obviously you certainly have the right to make a rebuttal closing if you like in terms of what has been said. So thank you.
Thank you guys all for being here, first of all. To the Honorable Chief Judge Johnson and the many judges present here and those who couldn't make it today. Thank you for your years of guidance, backing and support. I loved working for each and every one of you. Thanks for everything you did for me professionally and personally. To the beloved James A. Parker, thank you for recruiting me to be your, on your team. All those years ago, it was one of the best decisions I ever made. To my amazing colleagues, the entire court staff here in Albuquerque, Las Cruces, and Santa Fe, especially my fellow court reporters, a special thank you for the many wonderful memories, and there were many. To so many of my dear friends and former clients gathered here today, thank you for believing in me and entrusting in me. You certainly helped me set the cornerstone of my career. Lastly, to my family here today, thanks for the encouragement, support, love, and patience. Thank you for keeping my dinner warm and walking my dog. <laughs> and most important to our Savior, all glory is yours. For without you, none of this would have been possible. Thank you. I don't know why this is playing, but it's technology, so it never goes smoothly. <laughs> Congratulations on your retirement, Paul. 40 years of hard work, and now you get to enjoy your life on your own terms. Uh, it has been so fun working with you. You've been not only a great court reporter, but you've been very entertaining. <laughs> entertainment without you but life is an adventure with Paul never a dull moment I've known you for 36 years now I have worked with you for the last 20 and I know I will continue to see you in the future I'm looking forward to our next chapter together because I know there will be more I am not saying goodbye I am saying have fun have fun with your family have fun with us your court family and I just wish you the best always Congratulations on your retirement. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. uh, it has been so fun. <laughs> uh, hi, Paul. I uh, just wanted to tell you congratulations on your retirement. Uh, I think you obviously you've done an amazing job here at the courthouse. Uh, well, I also wanted to thank you for everything that you've done for me as one of the new judges here. Uh, you felt me, made me feel welcome and uh, part of this family, and, and I consider you part of my family as well. So thank you, good luck, and hopefully we'll see you, see you in the future. Okay. Mm -hmm.
high standards of excellence, and of course, boundless energy. But what makes Paul so incredibly special is his generous spirit and his warm heart. In his many years of dedicated public service, Paul has touched many, many lives, both inside and outside the court. Whether it's lending a hand, sharing words of encouragement, buying a special treat to bring a smile to someone's face, driving near or far, or opening his home for a short visit or a very long stay, Paul does that and more, all with heartfelt wishes. So today I say congratulations on a stellar career, and thank you for blessing so many of us with your friendship. Felicidades. Paul also wore several hats. He wore the court system hat for four years. Nobody's worked harder and done more to our court system than anywhere else. He worked well past the line of duty for Judge James Parker for more than 15 years. He was the go-to for other judges and staff as well, and quitting time for Paul was often late night. He wore the driver hat. Along with uncountable hours preparing for the transcripts, he clocked many more driving Judge Parker to Las Cruces where the two workaholics helped out the old book judges there. One of the swiftest highway pilots ever, he kept the old Tahoe safely on the road for decades. <laughs> he wore the best possible friend hat during his off time, helping Judge Parker manage hosting duties, errands, and events, and he gave him the biggest, baddest party of his life in 2017. Paul even helped the judge move. He loaded up his system on Chevy pickup to haul household goods across town to a temporary house he found for us. And when the judge's last days were imminent, Paul helped us cope, giving the care and the love we needed so badly then. We all hope Paul can wear a new hat in well-earned retirement to chill out on his beautiful patio with family and friends. The retirement hat may seem too <coughs> hot at first, Paul, but it'll relax and fit as you want to wear it in your promising future. Thank you, Paul, for all you are and all you have done for all. I'm going to read this so I don't go on a rambling tangent. Paul, I'm so thankful that you came into my parents' lives when my dad became a judge in 1987. You were a wonderful employee in my dad's courtroom. You were also so much more. You were a true friend. I've always appreciated how you cared so deeply for my parents. You and Flo had a special friendship. You helped her in so many ways. She always loved to entertain and you jumped right in and helped her throw the best parties. You honored my dad's career as a judge, even long after you left his courtroom to start your own business. Thank you for going to great lengths to celebrate every milestone anniversary <coughs> in his journey as a judge, and for being an integral part of the courtroom dedication in his last year. You always took such good care of my dad. When his health began to decline, you were my go-to person who always kept me informed when I was home in Colorado. You encouraged me and helped Jay and me to take care of them. Thank you for the many, many frontier breakfasts that you would bring us every Sunday morning. I got to partake whenever I was in town, but I'm pretty sure you did that for my dad and Jay every week. You always keep me well fed with dinners of Cervantes and Los You also provide us with our annual stash of pinto beans, so I never run out. You've supplied us with a place to process our annual green chili purchase and even given us coolers to take them home. Also, I still have your mom's green chili tea recipe with handwritten notes from my mom on a long faded but well cherished paper that's in the stack of recipes in my country. Thank you for loving Lollipop and my family. We all love you and appreciate you. Thank you for providing a place to stay whenever I bring Lollipop to town. Sometimes it seems like your VRBO is my home without curtain. I so admire and appreciate your strong faith, your dedication to going to daily mass, your prayers, and the morning inspirational text that you often send me. You've done all this while working tirelessly. Your work ethic is unmatched. Well, maybe my dad matched. You deserve a well-earned retirement, and I congratulate you on your career. 
but mostly I congratulate you for being a beautiful friend, helper, and friendly lawyer. Hi, Paul. I just wanted to quickly pop in and say huge congratulations to you on a wonderful career, and I'm hoping that you have a revitalizing and incredible retirement. It's a very well-deserved time for you. Um, I also just wanted to echo everything that my mom said. We, as the Parker Jones family, appreciate everything that you've ever done for us. Um, we love you so much, and I will always cherish all the time I have gotten to spend with you, and hopefully more to come. One of my first memories of you, Paul, was about 26 years ago. I had only taken a handful of depositions at this point in my career, and I was in a deposition, I was nervous, and during the first break, he turned to me with a big smile and said, you got this. <laughs> great. And I feel like that represents how you have treated me my entire uh, career. You've been a huge cheerleader. You always made me feel like I was doing great. You always made my clients, regardless of their background or the circumstances of their case, feel respected, comfortable, and you were always so kind to everyone. <coughs> I feel like we're losing an icon in the legal community with your retirement. But oh, you deserve this. And I hope that it's absolutely wonderful that you make your retirement as grand and as special as You've lived your life. You are an amazing human being. We're going to miss you so much. Lots of love to you. Bumbo. It was Tuesday, March the 15th of 1994, more than 30 years ago, when you and I first met. I was interviewing for a clerkship with Judge Parker. In the intervening 30 years, one of us has aged like a fine Italian wine and the other like an old dusty tractor. It's <laughs> up to you to figure out who's who. <laughs> you have been an institution in this court for almost 40 years. You are always the best dressed in the courtroom, not to mention the warmest, the wealthiest, and the most gregarious. Your good nature and your approachability reduce the intimidation factor for all of us who were participating and even those who were just observing. To the extent court was ever fun in front of Judge Parker or Judge Edetta, it was in large part uh, because of your personality and positivity. And I was a primary beneficiary of all that personality and positivity for the five month ordeal that was <coughs> the jury trial in the United States against John Charles McCluskey. Both sides benefited every time you bounced into the courtroom you greeted all of, all of the participants, including Mr. McCluskey himself, personally. That case was a grind for all of us, but it was made less so because of the role of goodwill ambassador that you seemed to so effortlessly play. Here's my last point. Somewhere along the way, you mastered the art of managing the informal grapevine of information. Call it, call it, call it 411, call it cheese mix, call it speech, as the kids say these days. Whatever it is, whatever it's called, it's the oil and the engine of any organization, including this court. Your roster of informants inside and outside, <laughs> your ability to work them to make the court run better and your bosses look better will never be surpassed. In every way, Pablo, you were an unbeatable and unforgettable teammate for all of us, and I will see you down the road. Good evening, Paul. Uh, I just wanted to record this short message and express my gratitude to you for all of your hard work over the last 18 years that I've known you, uh, both in my capacity as a litigator and during my time here on the bench. Your professionalism, your dedication to the job has been a real asset, and I am truly grateful. Uh, I wish you all the best going forward as you enjoy uh, all of the relaxation and new adventures that retirement will bring. I say that with something of a caveat because you and I both know that you're not really retired. You just <laughs> working for Dolores full time. 
Judge, take down this man. In truly the name of a very special friend of yours, a thoracic surgeon at MD Anderson, and uh, Mayor Alan Joy, as a result of his influence, his help, we had an appointment with the with the woman who then had the next surgeon of MD Anderson. We were treated with loyalty, he coordinated all of our care, and her surgery went beautifully perfectly, and she's now cancer free. <coughs> the enduring lesson from that story, and uh, there are several, but the most enduring and the one that uh, most on point today is that if it hadn't been for you being faithful to that spiritual knowledge uh, to ask me about God, and when I asked you later, you said, she had just been on my mind. I've been thinking about it. Uh, because you acted on that spiritual knowledge, with that miraculous connection between her and your soul and his name. I love you for that, Paul. I love you for all of the ways that you blessed my life. A huge congratulations to my twin brother as he begins his retirement this week. Naturally, I might be a bit biased, but I've never personally known anyone who has been generous to a fault, worked harder, cared deeper, and given more, not just to the court and his colleagues, but to the community, friends, family, and to anyone in need. You, my brother, exemplify what it means to be a true professional. I am so happy to take credit that I convinced you to take the job with the Honorable James A. Parker nearly 40 years ago. I'm incredibly proud of you and all you've accomplished over your career as a court reporter. I can't help but think just how over the freaking moon our mom and dad would have been to see this. As it has been said, what you leave as a legacy is not what is etched in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Good on you, brother. You've always managed to stay a stroke or two ahead of me on the course of life. I can't imagine I'll ever catch you now. Kudos, God bless, Dante, and well done, my twin. I'm Judge William P. Johnson, Chief Judge in the United States District Court for the District of New Mexico. And I just want to take this brief opportunity to thank, on behalf of all the judges, uh, Federal Court Reporter Paul Baca for his <coughs> decades of outstanding public service as a certified federal court reporter for the District of New Mexico. Um, Paul Baca has probably reported for most of the judges who've ever served as district judges in the District of New Mexico. He started as a reporter for Judge Juan Bursiaga. Uh, he's reported for Burl Payne, Ed Meacham, Howard Bratton, John Conway, and when Judge James Parker joined the court, Paul Baca became his court reporter and reported for Judge Parker until Judy Herrera joined the court and then became Judge Herrera's reporter. And then, most recently, um, Matt Garcia. Uh, I've also been privileged to have Paul serve and report some cases for me, and I know he's reported for many of the other uh, judges. To say that Paul Baca is an institution in the Federal District Court in New Mexico is an understatement. Uh, Paul just has such incredible uh, professionalism and uh, we will miss him very much uh, in his uh, retirement. I also want to mention and say a special word to Paul. 
and in my deep appreciation for the way he helped uh, Judge James Parker in the last couple of years of, of his life. So, you know, Paul, I know you're a very you know, devout uh, Christian, a very devout Catholic, and uh, you truly you know, live your faith. And uh, you make uh, the world a much better place, and you enlighten the lives of all those uh, who you are around. So I wish you and your family the best of happiness and success in your retirement, and hope that uh, you do come back and report occasionally uh, and see us uh, in the federal court. Thank you. Dude, look at how short my hair is. Remember how long it was when I met you? All right, think about that. Paul, thank you for everything that you've ever done for us. We're gonna miss you. We're gonna miss that beautiful smile every time we start a deposition, but we will stay in touch. Paul, thank you so much for everything you've done, not only for our careers, but really for our lives. Uh, we're gonna miss you, but looking forward to seeing you more outside of work. Love you. Hi, Paul. Uh, we have loved so much having you on the court and just being a friend. Uh, we wish you the best in retirement, and um, sorry I don't have anything more profound to say, but we will definitely miss you on the court, and we love you, and we'll see you soon. Paul, I love you so much. I'm sad you're retiring. I won't say goodbye. See you soon. Paul Baca, happy retirement. Thank you for the many years of guidance, loving, caring for my family. I wish you the best. I know you deserve it. Happy retirement, Paul Baca. I love you. Paul, hi Paul. This is Bernadette, as you know. I just am so happy to have come to your retirement party. Congratulations. Hope that we can get together sometime to party some more, celebrate a little bit more, longer. Um, this is a beautiful ceremony and I really enjoyed coming and seeing everyone. Congratulations again. Bye. Ready? Hi, Paul. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for inviting us. We feel very honored to be here. And thank you for everything you've done for me since we met 30 some years ago, before this one was even born. My boys were little. I really appreciate you, and I will see you soon. No podría despreciarme. Era el último brindis de un moheni por una reina. Los mariachis callados. De mi mano sin Congratulations, Paul. We love you to the moon and back. Very well deserved. Paul, you're uh, you're actually beyond description. You're you're kind of a saint. So we love you. Everybody obviously does, but uh, we're going to enjoy spending time with you. Can't wait for our yeah. Croatia trip. Happy retirement. Paul Baca, AC and Curtis here. I'm wishing to, hoping to wish you a happy and healthy retirement, buddy. And see you at some concerts soon. We haven't seen you all summer, but congratulations on a heck of a career. We're going to miss you around the courts, but uh, hope to see you at the concerts. Thanks. Mr. Paul Baca, AC Rodriguez here. Just wanted to tell you congratulations on your retirement. You have been a wonderful friend for many, many years. Um, I love you, I love your family, and I just wanted to tell you I love your faith. Uh, may God bless you always, and um, may God watch over you in your retirement. I know you're not really retiring fully, but take some time for yourself, 
relax and uh, I love you very much where my family loves you and you take care of yourself Paul I'll be talking to you soon bye bye Paul I'm so happy for you congratulations on your retirement thank you for everything you taught me from the day I started here I don't know if you remember but you helped me with a bunch of brief forms I would never have survived this job without you I love you hey Paul um, it's been a pleasure attending your retirement it's been really nice to hear all the positive feedback and how much you made an important impact on people's lives. It's been a pleasure and I hope you enjoy retirement. Hey Paul, you, you remember how you always used to criticize me for uh, driving an Oldsmobile Cutlass with a cracked windshield? Well, the, the years have gone by. Now I'm driving a Mercedes sports car with a cracked windshield. Thanks for, thanks for nothing. Okay. Paul, since this is just for you, I don't have to be shy about anybody else seeing it. You mean the world to me. You're like a brother to me and I'm gonna start crying. You've always been there for me. You can always tell when I need you. You've been there with the candle of Our Lady of Guadalupe. You brought a painting of Our Lady of Guadalupe. You know how much prayer means to me. You've been my brother, my soul, and I will never forget how kind you are to Cristina, my daughter. I know we will be friends forever. And I truly appreciate your friendship and your brothers, Peter and also Dolores. I love you, Paul. You are the kindest man I have ever met. And I hope that you will be by my side and I will be by your side for the rest of our lives. Thank you, Paul, for loving me, for supporting me, and for being such a great human being.